Today, I'm going to walk you through some core RTU fundamentals. Hi, I'm Andrew from DPS and welcome back. If you manage unmanned remote facilities, you really need to know how RTUs work, so I'm going to explain some of the core concepts to you now. An RTU is a remote monitoring device that you're going to put out at a site where you just need to know what's going on all the time. And nobody's really out there most of the time, so you need some help. So we install an RTU. This is a remote telemetry unit or a remote terminal unit. Both of those things mean essentially the same thing. It's a remote box that we're gonna put out there and it will send us telemetry information about what's going on out there. The inputs and outputs in an RTU fall mainly into three categories. There are some more advanced ones, but these are the basics. The first type are discretes or digital. Both start with a D, so we'll abbreviate that with a D. This is for things that can be represented well with on off, yes, no type information. And one really basic, great example, because we're going to probably put this thing out at a shack in the middle of nowhere, 10 foot by 20 foot with maybe a single door. So with that door, wouldn't it be great if we knew if it was open or closed? So we'll put a little magnetic contact on the door, wire that into one of our discrete points, and there we go. It's actually a loop electrically. So there you go. You have two pins tied there, and it's going to send a little bit of continuity test current through here. If it comes back on the other pin, it knows that the door is closed. If it doesn't, it knows that it's open or somebody cut a wire. So that's a discrete, and it's a beautiful example because discrete is all you need here. You don't need the second kind of input, which is an analog, because who cares if the door is half open or one quarter open? It's either open or closed. But in some cases, for things like temperature, humidity, perhaps fuel level or battery voltage, you do want to know how much, not just yes or no. So I'm going to use a temp sensor example here. And what would happen here is either 0 to 5 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps, those are the common sensor standards. That's going to be flowing into that input on the RTU and it will be able to sense what that level is and translate that into something you can use. So 0 volts might mean zero degrees Fahrenheit and five volts might be 200 degrees Fahrenheit and every value in the middle it can tell so it would know at any given time oh it's 86 degrees in my site or whatever the value happens to be. The final of the big three basic inputs and outputs is an output type it's called a control relay. This is the logical opposite of a discrete this is a discrete output and you're going to connect it to a piece of equipment that you want to control and one great example that we do a lot at DPS is generators. We want to activate that generator at, for a weekly run or when power fails, we want to have some control over it. And so if we just wire the two wires of our relay in, we're going to be able to tell that generator start up. We're not actually supplying power to it, we're just doing a little bit of coil voltage to say, okay, it's time to fire up now. It's sending a little signal. So those are your big three inputs and outputs. And at this point, your R2 has a fair amount of information. Your RTU, for example, a medium-sized device might have 16 discretes and four analogs and maybe four control relays. So you'll choose an RTU that has the right combination of these. And now it has information, but it's got to get it to you somehow. And the most basic way to do that is to send either email or maybe an SMS text message to your phone. And to do that, every modern RTU will have a basic web interface. You can just go to an IP address, you can set up things, you can change the IP, you can decide what the names of all these things are so you can get useful alert messages. It won't be alarm point seven, it will be door alarm. And then it, you can tell it what your email address is, what your phone number is, how it's going to contact you. And that works beautifully until you have about 10 sites. But imagine the confusion if you had 30 or 40 icons on your desktop for all of these web interfaces, you have 30 to 40 sites, that's when it no longer makes sense. And at that point, you and your organization need to be thinking about a master station. This could be an SNMP manager, could be a Tmon made by DPS, a variety of different masters you can use as long as the protocols are compatible. And it's going to talk to your RTU, but it's also going to talk to other RTUs out at other sites and it's going to bring everything together onto one screen for you. So that's a little about RTUs, and I hope this gets you started. It's really important to understand this because you can't begin to learn the more advanced RTU concepts until you understand this kind of information. So if you found this video helpful, 
please click the like button, subscribe to the channel so you can get more videos like this one. And until next time, I wish you excellent network reliability.